Y'all, today's video is going to be a fun one because it's part of the open playlist, one of my favorite ones to participate in. It's called the Five Under Five Dollar DIY Open Playlist Challenge. It's hosted on the fifth day of every month, and we are challenged to create five different things that cost us about five dollars or less to make. And so, you know, as prices rise at Dollar Tree, kind of makes it a little bit harder. Now, I will one little caveat, one little detailed disclaimer, if you will. I don't count things like paint because I'm not sure this paint cost me. I don't even know what it cost me, but I, I don't know how much of it I use, like 10 cents, three cents. I don't know. Um, but I did use it in this video. And so I don't always count paint or, or give like a whole lot of value to that or vinyl or twine, things like that, because I have those things on hand. But I am giving inspiration for you to create beautiful things for your own home on a budget. The host for today's playlist is Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And if you haven't checked out your channel, what are you waiting for? I mean, you can wait till after this video is over, but seriously, go, go and check out her channel. I'm going to have a link to her channel in the description box below, as well as to the playlist, because um, she's got lots of inspiration and she explains everything so well. And in fact, one of the DIYs in my video is something that she showed me how to do. Now we also have a guest host and the guest host this month for the playlist is me. I'm super excited and I'm so grateful and thankful that she asked me to co-host with her this month because first of all, five is my favorite number. So already got me there with the five under five dollar challenge. And plus I love a challenge where I have to think creatively and keep on a budget. So anyway, enough talking about all of that. I'm going to have the link to the playlist, the channels all in the description box below. You guys know where it is. So let's get on with the video on this channel. I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. Here are some options for metal buckets at Dollar Tree. These are $1.25 each, but I already have some in my stash. So I'm going to use that. And mine had wording on the side. I thought I could use rubbing alcohol. That didn't work. And then I thought I'd use um, nail polish remover to try to check off those words and that didn't work either. So I took my finger sander and just kind of buffed it off. It really wasn't too hard to take that off, but it does kind of leave an area where you can tell where you sanded off those letters. But first let, let's remove that sticker on the bottom. I always, I just don't like that. I think it makes it look cheaper. So I'm removing mine with my heat gun and just peels right off. And then I took these when I don't think they're not window clings. I guess they're just stickers. And I got those at Dollar Tree as well. So now we're up to $2.50 for this project, right? And I'm just cutting all the way around and I'm trying to find the one that's going to fit the best on the bucket. And I decided it's that one. So then I take some Mod Podge. You can get Mod Podge from Dollar Tree, but I have some on hand. I have a ton on hand actually. So I'm not really counting it in the cost, but we will kind of at the end. And I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on. And as you can see, it was a way too generous coat. So I'm going to wipe up the excess and put it back into the container because there's just no sense in wasting that. Then I take that vinyl sticker and I place it where I want it on the front of the little pail bucket thing that I'm working with and I press it down and then I will go back and add some Mod Podge across the top. Oh, first, let me try to cut away a little bit of the excess that's kind of hanging over the edge of the bucket. Then I take some extra Mod Podge <laughs> and I go over the top to help it all stay secure and stick down. Basically do the same for the other side. If yours is two-sided or if you want it to be two-sided, do the same thing on the other side. Now I noticed that some of mine was kind of peeling up just a little bit on some of the corners and I'll fix that in a second. But first we're going to kind of zhuzh this up just a little bit more. And I'm taking some twine that I got from Amazon. And again, I have twine on hand. I'm getting down to the end of it, but it lasts me a really long time. So it's really kind of hard to factor in the amount, but I'm just wrapping it around the handle because I think that adds just like a little extra touch and makes it just look a little bit nicer. And then I thought, wouldn't it be cute if it had some beads on the side, hanging off the side there? I don't know. I thought it'd look cute. So I got some beads from my stash. Now this is just like leftover beads from other projects and things that, you know, I may or may not have already painted. And I am just trying to use up my stash as much as possible. And again, I bought the beads in bulk on Amazon. So it's really kind of hard to know how much those cost. But now I'm taking several different shades of paint. I thought it was, if I painted them, 
like with you know several different colors it would give it more dimension more depth more interest if you will but it doesn't really turn out that way in fact i actually kind of rethink when you see the end result i i think i should have done something like pink or something that would pop against the metal bucket a lot better so i just string those on one side of the pail and i use some masking tape to create kind of like a little needle a little pointy end there and I just string on the beads. I have two small and then three medium size. And yeah, I guess there must've been something on there picking it out. Anyway, I'm stringing those up and then I just tie a little knot at the end. I just thought it would look cute if it had a little something extra hanging there on the side. And now I'm gonna fix that, the areas that are kind of pulling up a little bit. I take some parchment paper and my little heat press, my little mini heat press, and I reactivate the Mod Podge and I just kind of go over it with the iron. I use the parchment paper to make sure that in case there's any Mod Podge on the top, which I did put on the top, that it's not gonna to transfer to my the base of my little heat press thing and kind of protect my little heat press. But I'm telling you guys, this reactivation of the Mod Podge works like a charm. And this is how it turns out. I just put some foam in the bottom and I added just a bunch of different green florals. I love how it looks, but do you see how the green beads on the right side don't pop enough? I think I need to paint them like pink or, um, I don't know, I just think pink would pop a little bit more. Maybe I don't even need the beads. Maybe I should just cut them off. But anyway, I really like how it looks and it looks cute on my front porch. And $1.25 for the bucket, $1.25 for the sticker. And you know, that's $2.50, right? So just say a dollar in miscellaneous supplies, you're just looking at $3.50 to make a really cute little planter. For the next project, I am just prepping these three little pieces of scrap wood. I'm actually only going to use one for this project, but I just kind of want to show you what I'm doing. I'm using antique wax and I'm staining this one and you can find scrap wood for free a lot of different places. One of those being like Lowe's or Home Depot. They have a section in the back where they cut the wood that you can get very inexpensive and possibly free lumber. You can also go to like a fencing supply company, you know, somebody that does fences and stuff. They may be able to give you some of their scraps. Of course, never take anything without permission, but, and on this piece, this was something I had started to do a project on, sanded it off, and now I'm just using the antique wax to kind of dirty it up, like kind of vintage it up a little bit. Then I'm taking this beautiful Waverly chalk paint in the color, I think it's pool, and I am using my chippy brush, but I'm doing a pretty heavy coat, but I don't want it so heavy that it looks like I painted it with a regular paintbrush. I want it to look a little not finished all the way through but I'm just giving them a coat on the front so that I can add this little design that I'm gonna show you how to do. The next step is to add Mod Podge to the piece of scrap wood, as well as to the piece of copy paper that I have there. So what I did is I found an image that I wanted to use and I, it's black and white image, and then I mirrored it. I flipped it horizontally. So that way it looks backwards to you right now because I'm putting a little bit of Mod Podge on the paper and I'll put Mod Podge on the scrap wood. And then I'm going to place that piece of copy paper on top of it. I watched My Upcycled Life. She's the one, and I'll link her one of her videos down below. She's the one that showed me this technique, or at least the first one that I remember seeing it. Then I took a little sponge that's wet and I dampened it just enough that I could start to see the letters. And then you use just a couple of your fingers and start rubbing off the paper. You have to be careful not to do it too hard. I'm using an inkjet versus a laser jet. She recommends laser jet. I only have an inkjet and I'm not buying another printer. So I'm just making do with what I have. If you use the other kind of printer, it comes out so much you know, deeper in color, but look, I mean, it literally, it just looks so cute. And next to that little bucket, mm, super cute. And it only cost me I mean, the scrap wood is free and the copy paper. I mean, how much was that, you know, um, and Mod Podge. So, I mean, if you say a dollar or $2 total, I mean, dollar would be being generous. So I'm calling it a dollar. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Dollar Tree has an assortment of signs in all sizes and shapes. I'm using this wood circle 
And like I said, I got it from Dollar Tree. It's Dollar 25. And I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink, I think it is. And I'm just going to paint the entire thing black. So right now, we're at $1.25, right? Paint, I don't know how much, because I use some other embellishments. We'll have to come up with a figure later. Now that it's dry, I have made a stencil out of vinyl. And it's just my initial <laughs> of my last name, my monogram. I get, well, it's not really a monogram. It's my initial. Anyways, so I'm going to transfer that using paper transfer tape. I'm going to transfer that to this wood round circle that I painted with the Waverly Chalk Paint and Color Ink. And, you know, I mean, I try to place it. I'm not most perfect. I just measure with my heart. So I got that on and then I'm taking the ink color and I'm going over primarily focusing on the edges where the paint could like seep under or something. And I'm just trying to give it kind of like a sealer coat. And this is an important step and one that really helps those lines come out crisp and clean. And I don't do it in one of the projects and you'll see what happens. So trust me, try to do the sealer, you know, step first, the little prep step and then go back with the color that you're wanting to use. I promise you, it, it'll come out so much cleaner and crisper looking, but I'm just using a little dauber brush that I got from Dollar Tree, and I've had it for forever, and I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Snow White. So I'm gonna be using some burlap that I had in my stash. It's a very wide burlap. I got this at Hobby Lobby, and I'm sure I got it on sale. So I'm making a simple circle, and then I'm gonna take this other ribbon that I'm pretty sure I got from Hobby Lobby too, and I'm going to be making a circle to fit around the circle that I just made with the burlap. You can kind of see what I'm doing, so um, just follow along. Now, this is where this one might get kind of pricey because I used several stems from Dollar Tree. And I think these are $1.99, but I got them when they were 50% off in the His and Her section at Hobby Lobby. And I got them ages ago. So now I think they only do 40% off, but still you're looking at a dollar. I don't know. It, it costs $4 for me and then a dollar 25 for the sign. And like I said, I'm not really counting the paint, but even if we did, if we counted the ribbon and the burlap and the twine to hang it up, you're still looking at like maybe six bucks, you know, and this is how it looks very simple, very, to me, very classic looking. And it just, you know, kind of i just think it looks really great on my front door y'all i have a crafting group on facebook it's called crafty diys on a budget i have that group with my friend sarah from jujube diy who's another, another amazing crafter anyway i'm gonna have a link to that below i encourage you to join but i'm gonna challenge you if you join leave one positive comment for somebody else who's crafting and share what you're working on we really want to encourage you and become a creative and supportive community all right, back to the video. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you up front. Fabric is on sale every other week for 40% off, and the fabric that I'm using today is $6.99. So if you minus 40%, it's gonna be $4.20, okay? So that's where we're starting. But I already had this pillow on my stash. It was <laughs> an old pillow. And so I have the fabric, and I'm gonna need more than a yard because I'm making a king-size pillow. But if you make a smaller pillow, you absolutely can do this for under $5. The king size pillow is going to be 20 by 36 inches. Okay. So what I do for the front panel is I measure out 36 inches and then I cut that and then I measure 20 inches and I cut that. And then for the back panels, this is where you got to do a little bit of math. Emily from Farm Charm Chic is the one that I got this idea from and the, the one that I got the math from. So you cut it out 36 inches wide, but you only cut, you need two panels at 15 inches tall or wider, uh, tall, I mean. And so because they're going to envelope, they're going to overlap each other. So that's why you're going to need probably two yards <laughs> to, to get both panels. But I mean, it turns out cute, so I like it. But if you make a smaller one, it you, you're going to use less fabric, of course. Now, I use my little heat press, mini heat press to create a seam. Like I just press down about an inch. That's going to be my seam. So I'm pressing it down with the heat press to make it easier for when I put the glue on later that so it'll 
in my opinion, work better. <laughs> It'll, it works a little bit easier for me than trying to hold it down and make sure it stays down. I've already kind of pressed it into place. And you only have to do this, if you choose to, on the back panels, on, on one end, uh, one edge of the back panels, because that's the only thing that's going to be needing to be like uh, a seam. So that way it doesn't, you know, like unravel or something like that. All right, to put everything together, you could use a sewing machine, but since this is a no-sew pillow, we're gonna be using no-sew fabric glue. I also have on hand some liquid stitch. You can also, I think it's the product's called Stitch Witchery, and that would work as well. Or you could use hot glue. I don't recommend hot glue just because of um, the ability, if you use one of these two products, you have the ability to wash it and dry it and it, it stays fine and also i live in texas so it gets really hot outside so i don't want anything like hot glue potentially melting or becoming soft or something like that not that i've ever had a problem with it because i do have things with hot glue out there but anyway i just prefer to use this liquid stitch type thing yeah if you're doing with a sewing machine or stitch witchery it's a different process but with the liquid stitch or the you know uh fabric glue you just run a little line of glue down and just pat it down. I, that's, that's all I do and it holds just fine. I, I've done this many, many times for my front porch. And so you just get the two back panels and like I said, create a seam with that liquid stitch or the fabric you know, glue, whatever you're using. You can even use hot glue. I don't really recommend it, but I like to wash it and dry mine. So that's why I use that fabric glue. So now I have the front panel down and I have the right side of the fabric facing up and I'm going to put down one of our envelope panels and I'm going to be putting right sides together. So this is the wrong side because this, you can see the seam, set it down, match up everything. There's usually a wrong and a right side of a fabric and we're going to put the right sides together to complete this next step. So you put one panel down and of course it's not going to reach all the way to the top because it's only 15 inches. And you're going to put that fabric glue or that liquid stitch all the way around the bottom and then up each side. And so I'm just trying to be careful there and I'm putting that I'm creating a seam essentially. If you were using a sewing machine, of course, you would just create a stitch, <laughs> stitch all the way down. I just didn't want to drag out my sewing machine when you can do it with this liquid um, fabric glue and it works just awesome. Then the next step is to, um, sometimes I let it dry a little bit. Sometimes I go ahead and go to the next step. It just kind of depends on what's going on. But then you just glue that down at the corner all the way to the top where that end of the fabric is and then you pat it down and just be careful you just don't get it any you know everywhere but um, then you pat it down and then I will turn it around and I will do the other side of it so that the first panel back panel is and the one, one way you can tell if it's the right or wrong side the seam is the the bad side of the seam is going to be facing up. I don't even think that makes sense. And it's really kind of hard to see with this fabric, which is the right side and which is the wrong side. So some, you might have to guess if you can't tell because some fabric is dyed all the way through and some fabric is just printed on the top. So once I've got that first panel down, now it's time to put the next panel down and you see how it's overlapping there at the top. Well, we're going to do the same thing as far as gluing down and I'm just trying to line everything up so I don't have to fiddle with it later, but then I kind of flip up the bottom seam. I'll do that in here. Am I going to do it? Or just, am I just telling you, oh, there's strings like everywhere. There's strings all over my shirt too. So I take that liquid stitch or the fabric glue, whatever you're using. And again, I just run a bead of the glue all the way down. And um, I was almost out of this one. That's why I was using two different kinds because I'm trying to use up all of this because this is, I don't know how much it is. I think it's $6.99. It's lasted me a pretty long time, but it, it's not, you know, super cheap. And that's why a lot of people use hot glue instead of this. But like I said, I like to wash and dry my 
pillow covers and so that's why I use that. So you're gonna do the bottom stitch like you see me doing here and then we're gonna flip it around on one side and I'll do another bit of glue to glue that panel side of the panel down and you're gluing on top of the bottom panel I don't know if you can really you can't really tell or at least I can't really tell from here then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do the other side of the panel and then I'm gonna let it dry overnight I you want it to dry really good because you don't want all this to go to waste you know um, at least that's what I do and there's not really a way to speed up the drying process that I found so it's just a matter of being patient and timing it correctly once it is all dry you can turn it inside out so that's just like a pillowcase <laughs> you're just going to be turning it inside out and it holds up really really well the, the seams are very they're really pretty sturdy and then you just put your pillow in there and you are good to go look how it looks on my front porch i just love it i think it looks super cute and um, we're in the process of painting that bench brown so the the bottom legs are not brown yet but we'll get to it guys we'll get to it but i i just think it looks really nice on the front porch and it's a nice soft pop of color and now total for this project for me it's going to cost me eight dollars and forty cents plus the glue and stuff just say nine or ten dollars total to do that to make a king size pillow that I can reuse over and over. But those two pillows on each side of that pillow, I made those um, using the same method and those that wasn't even a yard of fabric. So um, you could just say one yard of fabric, $4.20, you know, not bad at all. I saw this sign at Hobby Lobby online, it's 30 bucks and the dimensions are 60 by 13. Now, if you go to Lowe's, this is where I shop mostly, there's lots of options for lumber, okay? We're trying to keep this pretty cheap. They have a reduced price lumber in the back. Theirs is 50% off. When I was at Home Depot a couple weeks back, theirs was 70% off. And so what I'm doing is I'm just searching here because there's reasonably good wood here and at 50% off, you know? Now look, this one's bowed, so you do have to kind of turn them and look and see if they're bowed or anything like that just because um, unless you don't care <laughs> but i always suggest that you check that so that way when you're making your signs they're all going to fit nicer now i happen to have scrap fencing wood on hand uh, i have a little bit left and we're going to use it for oh look at me just jumbling the camera around anyways so i did find a piece of wood here and um, it seems relatively straight and so when I asked the guy for help on this, because, you know, I want us to know, to be able to show you guys, see, it's relatively straight. Now, this wood is $3.45, and it is, let me see, it's only six foot long by five and a half inches, so it would be a really skinny <laughs> leaner if you just used one board, but if you bought two at 50% off, you know, you're only looking at $3.45 for two boards. That'd be 11 inches across and a six foot leaner, you know, not bad. And um, there's different ways that you could put this together, very economically, very budget friendly. But there are a lot of different options. So I always encourage you to go look through the scrap wood pile. See if you have a local fence builder that might give you some scrap pieces for free. You can also buy some online, and this one is $7.38, this one's $5.18, and this one's $3.35. You don't have to make a six-foot sign. You don't have to make a five-foot sign. You can make a four-foot sign and be able to take some scrap wood like this and get one piece, cut it in half, and make yourself a decent-sized sign. So that's kind of the inspiration that I'm trying to share with y'all. It doesn't have to be exactly the same it has to, this is an inspiration to to tell you you can find budget friendly stuff and really make it super cute so i'm having to sand down my wood pieces because they are fencing material and they're really really rough and then i took my cricut and i'm cutting out another stencil and i'm just using some vinyl that i had on hand so if you were to buy one of the least expensive pieces of wood there was one that was seven dollars well let's see um I, i'm just I'm, try, I'm trying to think how to best advise you guys on how to like find the lumber at a decent price 
that seven dollar and 38 cents one it was going to be 10 inches wide and five by five so it's it's kind of close to the inspiration piece if you will but they have um a five by 11 piece you could cut that in half and still have you know a decent size sign you know what i'm saying because if it's 12 foot high if you cut or 11 foot high if you cut in half it's five and a half but anyway, you, you get the picture. So don't let like, oh, the wood's so expensive. It is, but you can find it very inexpensively if you look, especially if you look in the, the scrap wood sections of your local home improvement store. I'm taking Waverly Wax in the color antique. I am almost out of this particular bottle. Rest assured, I have another on hand. And I am staining the top part here with that color. And I'm kind of making assigned it kind of evolved as I started making it I attached the wood pieces together with another scrap piece of wood that I had and again they have scrap wood that they'll literally give you to to you for free if you ask them or they'll give you at a really deep discount in addition to the ones that you saw me show you on that little palette thing for the bottom half I am making the stained area a little bit larger and I'm um, just like again staining it um, painting it on and then I take a damp scrap piece of cloth and I wipe it off then I take Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramat paint in the color linen and I use that little painters tape to mark it off so that way I don't get it all over everything and I just paint the middle section that white color linen color <laughs> and I'm using my favorite paper transfer tape to, and I've had this paper track. This stuff lasts a long time for me, but I reuse and reuse and reuse mine because girls on a budget, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to keep things inexpensive, but looking high end. And so I'm using the transfer tape to transfer the, the uh, vinyl stencil over. And once I got it where I want it on the sign, I'm just pulling that paper transfer tape. And like I said, I save it. You'll see me using it later. I save it. And um, I mean, why waste it? Now here's where I will tell you, do as I told you, not as I'm doing, because I did not put down a barrier layer of paint. Ordinarily, I would say, do a coat of the base coat that you have there, which is that Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultimate Paint in the color linen. Do a base coat of that first, then paint on your color. Lisa didn't do that. Learn from Lisa. Don't be like Lisa on this one, because you're going to see in a minute, it, it don't turn out that great. <laughs> I mean, it turns out fine, but you know what I'm saying? It could have turned out a lot better had I heeded my own advice. So word to the wise, do the base layer first, kind of as a barrier layer to prevent that bleeding, and then put on your color coat. And before it completely dries, I do pull it up. And you can already see it's bled through in a lot of spots. Not just one or two, but a lot of spots. Here, let me, let me give you a closer look. <laughs> so... Do you see how it's like, I mean, it's almost like, no, that's, that's, doesn't look that great at all. I mean, to me. So even from kind of like a distance, it looks a little not neat. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a small paintbrush and this little cap with some paint in it and kind of touch up the areas that need touching up. So I fixed it enough to where I'm like it, I'm liking it and I'm happy with it. And then I did cut out a stencil of olive leaves and I used my Cricut for this. And so, yeah, we're doing, adding it to there. And I don't have, I mean, I kind of sketched out what I wanted to do, but again, I'm also just kind of winging it and just, you know, seeing where my heart takes me on this one. And I'm taking several different shades of green paint and I'm using that dauber brush that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just stenciling in the leaves onto this little porch leaner. I had another little stencil and I'm going to repeat the process. I kind of let it dry a little bit, but um, <laughs> I could have just taken it off and, and did that that way. But anyway, I didn't. This is how I'm doing it. And so on this one, though, I don't feel like I needed to do that base coat first because I don't care if it's if it's a little messy looking. I was going to add this little wreath at the top, 
but once I'm done, I just felt like it looked too busy up there. I mean, I like it if I didn't put these leaves here, but I did put the leaves here. So um, I ended up not using that little round wreath there. And I'm just kind of laying out to see how it's going to lay out. Is it going to be like I like it? And then I just transfer that on um, the vinyl stencil back onto the porch leaner. And then I paint it just like I did the other ones. Well, here, I guess I, I guess I'm going to show you a little bit more of the process. <laughs> I didn't think I left all this in there, but uh, it, it actually worked out really well. The only thing that I might change would be to add a little bit more leaves towards the top because I think it looks just a little plain with just the one leaf. But, you know, I mean, well, one vine going up, I think I, I would like to add another one. But it turns out so cute and I just absolutely love it. And again, I don't have a real good price for this on for you, but you could make a smaller sign for less than $5. You could make a decent size sign for $10, still a really good price because look how cute this turned out. Now, I didn't count paint, I didn't count vinyl. I, I had all that stuff on hand, y'all, so it's really hard to, to know how much to add to that. But just say I added like three bucks for that, you know, you could make a decent sign for six to $8 and you could make a larger sign for like, you know, 12 or so. 13 something like that didn't it turn out cute i just i love it i love oh i just really love how it turns out it's this is simple enough but it adds a nice touch to my front porch and i'm just really really pleased with how it all turned out and here's just another quick glimpses at the stuff that i made today on my front porch and i hope you like it and <laughs> tell me which one was your favorite you know, I think they all turned out pretty cute and they're very affordable, very, very budget friendly. And I would love to see if you recreate any of them. Y'all, you know what I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the video? I mean, not that it had to be at the beginning, but anyway, I, I have 7,000 plus followers, subscribers on here. What? And I appreciate, I really, really do appreciate each and every one of you. I can remember when I was a smaller channel thinking, oh, if I could just get to, you know, the bigger numbers. And now I feel like I'm actually starting to grow. And I appreciate so much if you've shared my channel, if you've liked, if you've subscribed. Um, I really do appreciate that. But uh, I also want to know which one was your favorite from today's video. Do you have a favorite? I kind of lean towards the porch leaner. I just, I like how it turned out. I think I do need to add, I think I said this in the video, but I need to add some more vines to it. But I mean, I like how it turned out. You let me know if you had a favorite. Don't forget links in the description box below to like Emily from Farm Charm Chic. The playlist link is below. My Facebook group, Crafty DIYs on a Budget, link below. All kinds of stuff is down there. So um, all kinds of fun stuff. And I think that's it. But thank you for watching my video. Thank you for liking, subscribing, following, sharing, all that kind of stuff. I know I just said that, but I'm saying it again because I really do mean it. And um, don't forget, if you want to follow me um, here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or something like that, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye.